The Aldis Podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our ServiceNow series, where we interview the best and brightest of the industry to share their story, advice, and views on the exciting world of ServiceNow and digital transformation. Hi everybody, it's Mark Kelly here. Hope you're doing really, really well today. I'm delighted to speak with Dan Grady. Dan is Director of Product Management at ServiceNow. And in the run up to Knowledge 23, where Dan is speaking, Dan is going to give us a little bit of an overview about his journey to the world of ServiceNow and what his talk is about. Dan, thanks for joining us on the show today. Oh, happy to be here, Mark. It's uh, always a pleasure to talk to somebody about process optimization, and which is, if you're not familiar, uh, ServiceNow's in-platform process mining solution that helps customers uh, x-ray the workflows they have running on the platform and show them where and how they could be doing better for anyone that's involved with them. Um, so really excited to, to have some time to spend with you here today. Now, tell us a little bit about your job and your, your kind of role. And for people that don't necessarily know much about that, uh, can you shed a little bit of light and, and how are you kind of helping customers either internally or externally? My role as part of the product team is I'm what we call an outbound product manager. So my primary focus is on a day-to-day basis working with both customers and partners to help them understand what process optimization is and, and how it can help. Um, so that's it's really exciting because I get to work. That's every day working with customers, learning their use cases, helping them see where there's inefficiencies in the processes that they have running on the platform, and then helping them understand how they could use the solution to then remediate those, to improve their workflows, to gain back some time, efficiency, and productivity for the organization. Uh, it's it's always a, a fun moment to me. The first time we turn on the solution on a customer instance, we mine their data and they see the reality of what's actually happening behind the workflows. Um, the 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 kind of the shock and awe and excitement about the opportunity is is always fun for me um, it, to experience. So Dan, could you give us an example of what that might look like from a novice perspective? It, again, you don't need to mention any customers' names, but maybe it, uh, in industry or some life examples. Yeah, sure. It's it's actually. There's a lot of common inefficiencies that you see within workflows and processes. Uh, for example, you know, you, you've got the common, people like to call it ping-ponging. So they've got tickets that are bouncing back and forth between teams. And they, for in the past, they really haven't had the opportunity or the visibility to, see, they knew what was happening, but they didn't have the visibility to actually quantify the impact of that ping-pong effect. Or maybe it's looking at things that are being, work that's being, uh, resolved, let's say, and then reopen. So a customer is having a bad experience, they don't accept the solution, and now we have to do some level of rework. Any level of rework, one, has a negative impact on the customer experience, but two, it also causes us to, to lose some time from a productivity perspective in the organization. So ping-ponging, rework, those are two very common examples. Uh, another one is um, situations when we have to go back to the user for additional information, or th- whether it be an employee or a customer. Uh, so you can start looking at within the process when that's happening, where it's happening, and then getting an understanding of what the intake channels that are causing that to happen most. And in many cases, it sim- could simply be uh, you have to just add another field on a form, or maybe you roll out a virtual agent conversation to help improve that intake experience, eliminate, or I shouldn't say completely eliminate, but reduce the times in which we have to go back to somebody for additional information. Again, speeding the way that the work moves through the organization. Funny because people, they just want it done right the first time, and they got kind of a low patient threshold, right? It's it's kind of funny how things have moved on that Netflix style experience where everything just works. People just kind of it's just the way it is. So going back and asking for additional information, um, it, it's something you just don't want to do. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's. I mean, these are very common things, and it's sometimes it can't be avoided, but you know. These are things that you just don't, these are things that you just don't see in the reports and dashboards that customers have today, right? They can see at a high level what their resolution or closure times are. 
but what they can't see is kind of why those things are trending in the direction that they're trending. Um, so very often what we like to say to customers is that process optimization is going to help them get to their whys behind the KPIs that are out there. Their reports and dashboards tell them what's happening, but when somebody sees it, what's happening, leadership always wants to know why that's happening. And that hasn't been easy for people to do. Now within platform process mining, customers have the ability to start digging in and understanding the why so they can start making the adjustments and taking action to improve those KPIs on their dashboards. So you're going to be pretty busy at Knowledge. Tell us about what you'll be doing. Yeah, I, I mean, Knowledge obviously is one of my favorite events of the year. I tend to be a pretty social person, so it's great to be around a lot of customers. And there's just so much excitement right now in the ServiceNow ecosystem around process optimization and process mining. Um, we've got a number of sessions. There's at least six that I'm aware of, um, whether they be hands-on labs or uh, just general sessions in which we're introducing people to the concept of process optimization and process mining. Uh, I'm, I'm personally involved in speaking in three of those six, and I'll be around supporting the others. But of course, we'll we'll have a, a booth um, there for a specific uh, demo pod. I don't know what we're calling them this year, but there'll be a section specifically focused on process optimization where you can get live demos or even get hands-on and create your, pro your own project and start figuring out and understanding how easy it is to set this up on your own. So lots of opportunity to learn more about process optimization at Knowledge this year. Brilliant. And what are you personally looking forward to at uh, Knowledge this year? I think one is just the uh, just people, right? I mean, that's that's really, last year we did it and it was split into two locations, at least for me. I got to go speak at New York, the New York Knowledge, and then out in Las Vegas. It was awesome having two opportunities. It was nice to be able to do a presentation and not have to worry about my neighbor's landscapers showing up in the middle of that presentation with a leaf blower um, there. So it's great. I'm, again, looking forward to interacting with people. One of the things that uh, we've been running this year is something called the Process Optimization Academy, um, which is a, a monthly, I guess I'll call it office hours type session where we get on and we talk a little bit about a certain part of the solution, allow customers to ask us some questions about what they're doing about process optimization. And I've met so many people virtually through those academy sessions, but I've never met them in person. And I'm really looking forward to kind of just making a, a connection with those people that I've only met virtually uh, right now. So that that is what I'm looking forward to most is just making a real connection above and beyond the virtual connections that we've started to create. Dan Grady, Director of Product Management at ServiceNow. Thank you very much for sharing your time today. Sure. Oh, thanks for having me on. This has been fantastic. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Aldis Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.allthis.com to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.